Hello and welcome back to the CG Bros. This is Brother Damien, and in this video I'm going to show you a quick and simple method for creating a seamless looping flag animation from an end cloth simulation we created in Maya. Let's go ahead and get started. Now you might be asking yourself, how can a dynamic simulation loop as is against the very nature and essence of a simulation? And why would I need to do that anyway? Well, maybe you're creating an animated graphic for a DVD menu or an animated clip for your website. Or you might find yourself in a situation like I did, having to animate hundreds of end cloth flags over a 1500 frame long shot. Now that's about 50 seconds, dynamically. And I only had two days to set it up, simulate it, light it, and render it out. Now I could use the trick of simulating one really, really long cache sequence for one flag, and assign it to all my flags, and then offset the animation on each flag. Or I might combine all the flag meshes into a single mesh and simulate that, because it's a lot quicker than simulating them individually. Now the problem with both those approaches is that I could easily end up with a gigantic cache file that can sometimes be difficult to manage and take quite a while to generate, especially if I have to simulate it several times. But what if I could create a loopable cloth simulation that I could use on all my flags? Impossible, you say? Nay, I say. Let's make one. So come up to Create Polygon Primitives, Plane, drag out a plane. Let's make it 30 units wide by 20 units long. We'll also subdivide it 30 in X and 20 in Y. Then let's rotate it 90 degrees in the X. Then in the end dynamics menu, select end mesh, then create end cloth. Now, I'm not going to go deeply into the flag settings. As a matter of fact, I'm going to leave pretty much everything at their defaults because really what I want to show you here is how to get a looping animation. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a transform constraint on our cloth to hold the mesh in space as if it was attached to a flagpole. So I'll select the cloth and right mouse click to get my component selections and select vertex. Then I'll go ahead and drag a selection around the vertices along the left edge of the flag here. Then I'll come up here to End Constraints and select Transform. I'll go ahead and set my timeline also from 0 to 300 frames. I also want some basic motion on the flag, so with the flag selected, come over to the Nucleus Solver node, and I'll go ahead and throw some settings in for wind. I'll set the wind speed here to 20. I'll go ahead and leave the direction in X at 1. And I'll also select the wind direction in Y. I'll set that to 1 to lift the flag a little bit. I'll also set the wind noise to 0.25. Now these are just some fast settings to get us going here, and if you want more in-depth endcloth flag tutorial, please check out our Creating a Tattered Pirate's Flag using endcloth videos. Let's go ahead and play through the simulation. Now I think this will work pretty well for our purposes. Now the first thing to do is to cache out our simulation. Now with the flag selected, come up to End Cache, Create New Cache, and click one file, and hit Create. Great. We can see that the sim is cached, because I can now scrub through the timeline and we can see our flag's animation. So with the flag mesh cached to disk, we don't need the solver or the cloth to try to sim in the background anymore, so in the attribute editor, I'll go ahead and turn off the solver and the cloth shape. Now I'll go ahead and leave the constraint in case I want to resim the flag later. Then I'll open up the tracks editor under Window, Animation Editor, Tracks Editor. And here, in the Tracks Editor, we can see our cache clip, and it goes from frame 0 to 300. And we can grab the red line and drag it to scrub through to see the animation. Now, what we want to do here is to create a sequence that ends in the same state as it begins. How could we possibly do that? You forget that this is the CG Bros. Now, I'm going to show you what's referred to as cache blending. I'm going to blend two cache clips together to create a seamless looping animation dynamic simulation. Since I only have one clip in the tracks editor, let's go ahead and bring in a second. So with the cloth mesh selected, come up to end cache, attach existing cache file, and select the cache file we just created. Now this will bring in a duplicate of the original cache file clip. And here's where the magic all happens. Now I'm going to use an increment of 100 frames to use the blend duration between my clips. Now I'm going to left click on the first clip, and slide it back so that the frame 100 in the cache clip is at frame 0 on the timeline. This will be the beginning position of our flag. 
so I'll drag the second cache clip so it begins on frame 100 on the timeline. So what we have here is frame 100 of the first cache clip as a starting point for our loop on frame 0. And we have a duplicate cache clip with its frame 100 moved over to start at frame 200 on the timeline. This means that the same cache clip position, frame 100, is now on frame 0 and 200 on our timeline. Now all we need to do is simply keyframe the blending between clip 1 and clip 2 caches. Now how do we do that? Well, when we added the second cache clip, Maya also added this handy cache blend node. Now here are the two cache clips and their weighting adjustments. Now what I want to do is blend from the first clip to the second clip across the overlapping frames, frames 100 to 200, so that by the time the blend is completed on frame 200, the mesh will be back into the original starting position, frame 100 of the first cache. Now I know this sounds a little tricky and confusing, but just try to follow me here. Now I'll do this by going to the frame on the timeline that I want to start the blending from, frame 100, by sliding the input weight of my first clip to 1 and setting a keyframe, and the input weight on my second clip to 0 and setting a keyframe. Then we simply go to frame 200 and reverse the input weight positions. What this does is create a ramp from one cache clip through to the other, bringing the cloth back to its original start position by frame 200. And it's now a looping animation from frame 0, cache 1, frame 100 to frame 200, cache 2, frame 100. And since frame 0 and frame 200 are now the same frame, we have a perfect loop. Now simply set the length of the timeline to the length of the loop, which is 200 frames. And I'll go ahead and create a play blast. I'll pause while I play blast this and come back when it's done. Okay. Now, while this looks pretty good, there is a small glitch in the animation. While it's really slight, I want it to be perfect, so let's take care of it now. Now, what's happening here is that since the frame range in the loop is currently from 0 to 200, and since frame 0 and 200 are the same frame, what it's doing is it's playing the same frame twice as the loop loops over into the next segment, resulting in a pop in the sequence. Now, all I need to do to fix that is to set the start frame in the timeline from frame 0 to frame 1. I'll play blast it again and come back. Okay, there you have it. A seamlessly looping, dynamic cloth simulation using the Tracks Editor and the Cache Blend node. And while our loop was 200 frames long, you can make your loops any length you'd like. Now keep in mind that the Tracks Editor allows you to move, scale, trim, and even merge end cloth caches together. And together with the Blend Cache node, you can keyframe blends between any number of cached end cloth sequences, opening up a world of cool effects possibilities. Now don't underestimate the power of the Blend Cache node. It's one of my secrets to exerting a high level of control over my cloth simulations, and it saved me countless times in the production trenches, and I know you'll find it valuable as well. Well, I hope you found this interesting and fun, and you learned something new. I'll see you next time at the CG Bros.